what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Uh, we just got done with another insane day uh, of both the LEC and LCS playoffs. Obviously, hey, spoiler alerts, the LEC wasn't as close. It wasn't as exciting. Um, uh, you know, Misfits was in that series for a little bit, but ultimately a 3-0 for Fnatic. Fnatic's going to Worlds. But on the LCS side, no matter how exciting these series are, no matter how close they are, no matter how many times we get five games or drama or hours and hours of, of pauses or, or everything that we get, um, at the end of the day, somebody's going to come out uh, victorious. Somebody's going to come out on the losing end. And unfortunately, um, or maybe fortunately, depending on who you ask or, or who you're talking to, uh, TSM came up on the short end of the stick yesterday, despite a, a very, very valiant effort against Evil Geniuses. Uh, and now TSM is finished. Their season is over. What was an insane, in so many ways, 2022 for TSM, all the drama, all the lows i want to say all the highs but like really there were not that many highs um there were some some cool things to come out of it obviously solo was a fun story um the return of tactical in the playoffs uh was kind of a cool story um you know he had a little bit of a, an inti moment in game five but um you, you know it was cool to see him come back and, and look a little bit like him old like his old self positively and negatively um chime uh, was was definitely a cool story maple coming in is a cool story but you also had you know the reggie investigation you had the peter zhang drama you had tsm finishing last or, or second to last or whatever the heck you want to call it in spring you had them finishing seventh and then top six in, in summer um and if, if uh, with a normal playoff format they they wouldn't even have had the chance for this lower bracket run but they did go on a little bit of a lower bracket run they did force evil geniuses to game five um, but ultimately, their season is done. And in some ways, that's going to be a good thing, even for TSM and the TSM fans. Putting this year behind them is going to be huge. It's going to be very, very big because, yeah, maybe they could have kept this run going. Hey, they probably weren't going to qualify for World. So, yeah, maybe they could have kept this run going for like another couple of days or whatever. Maybe TSM against Team Liquid, TSM against Bjergsen would have been a fun story, a fun rivalry. But it was going to come to an end at some point. And now they can put this year behind them. They can put all the losing, all the drama, all the getting made fun of, all the negative things that have happened, which have been a lot. Their socials have been on a major decline. We freaking lost pretty much all of TSM Legends this year when that was one of the flagship programs of TSM uh, and really one of the, the best and most highly acclaimed like esports shows. Um, you just had so many different things going on and with the new kind of leadership at TSM, you know, Dominic Callis, Glenn, if they do decide to, to keep all those guys or, you know, maybe they go out and get a new GM, new coaches, I don't know, but they have all these new guys in place that kind of inherited the Kaido and Shenny situation. Now they get to go in their own direction. Now we really get to see what this TSM team is about to do. Um, what does uh, Dominic Callis think a good offseason looks like? Or, or what does the person that he puts in place think a good offseason looks like? Who's their... Uh, coaching staff going to be. I think a lot of people expect Chowie to, to probably not be returning next year. Um, and, and now we're getting into a, a pretty interesting offseason. And now, um, you know, this next season is going to be really, really big for this TSM team. But like I said, this series was crazy. This series uh, had a little bit of everything. TSM actually came out uh, swinging in game one. I don't know why I don't know what's going on. All right, TSM came out swinging in game one. A 46-minute victory for them. Uh, Tactical keeps pulling out this Zaya. I mean, there's, there's really not a lot of... I don't see anyone else playing Zaya right now. I don't know if they're playing it in the LPL and LCK, but I don't think anyone else in the LCS or LEC is playing Zaya. But but Tactical has been playing it the last two weeks, and, and he's been winning on it. Um, and they were able to get a get a win, a, a, you know, 18 to 15 in this game and start out 1-0 in the series. We had heard that Evil Geniuses, well, we saw Evil Geniuses was not very good last week against Cloud9. We have heard they've still kind of been struggling in scrims and stuff, and they're not in great form. We've heard TSM is actually in like, you know, pretty decent form and actually looking uh, kind of good. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they came out and kind of punched them in the mouth. They win in game one, but EG bounces back in game two in a big way. Um, we see... Some Something interesting to note of, of these picks as well. I think this is going to be continue to be a big story, especially if EG is able to make it to Worlds or ever. But especially in the in the TL series as well. Danny plays the Ezreal. They lose. Danny pulls out the Seraphine in game two. Um, really, really good game here. Inspired nine one and ten on the Sejuani. Um, they just get the you know Seraphine comp dub here, uh, and they even it up one and one in the series. And then we start getting all these pauses. I don't know if you guys watched it live. And honestly, I didn't even see game five live. It was getting really late for me. I'm on the. East 
East Coast. I fell asleep during Game 5. I woke up today not knowing who won the series. Uh, you know, and, and I had to go back and, and watch Game 5 this morning before I'm making this video and stuff. Um, but we had all these insane pauses. I mean, we had hours and hours and hours of pauses. And, and honestly, there was a time where we didn't know um, if the, the games were even going to be played today. Uh, I know Peter Dunn uh, put out this tweet. I don't know why I'm so like light right now. I, my, my, I have my blinds closed on my window. But Peter Dunn tweeted out this. This is what was going on. He says, I know a lot of TSM fans seem to care about this for competitive integrity purposes. There's an audio feed that goes to the coach rooms, which normally one plus referee for each side listens to in case of emergency. We heard comms, and then it would just cut out completely and we suddenly hear nothing mid-sentence all in-game comms and sounds also cut between players um then slight delay before game pause i guess uh, because people typing pause uh, or not realizing yet sound is gone there's no possible way to game any system it's super obvious when happening uh, feel bad for TSM because Chowie and the rest of uh, the coaching staff are class X, despite action of some certain others, and we'll talk about that probably in a whole nother video, and the team improving quickly. TSM scrims in spring were kind of a meme, and yet by summer they were pushing us hard. Now, was that because TSM was getting a lot better? Was that because EG was getting worse? Probably a little bit of both, but but yeah, so there was all these audio issues. The audio was just completely cutting out. Riot couldn't figure it out. I think Riot ultimately offered them, hey, do you guys want to play on stage with these audio issues? Do you guys want to play backstage? stage okay now my camera went all the way black do you guys want to play backstage um where you'll be in the same room as each other and able to talk to each other or do you want to go back home to your home facilities and play from there ultimately tsm and eg both decided to uh play from the the studio um and just kind of deal with the audio issues but then eventually we got to play game three in which after the long pause eg came out and kind of smacked him in the mouth so they were like hey you know tsm had some momentum did the pause ruin their momentum they came out strong they came out really flat in game three you know how different could things have been i don't know but again in this game danny played senna i think that is also interesting game four tsm comes back though tsm finds life a 19 to 5 victory they push it all the way to game five and in game five tsm actually has a lead tsm has like a 3k gold lead now hey Seraphine, not the strongest early game champion. You are often going to get leads against Seraphine or whatever. Um, there are some big moments in this game. Uh, Jojo Pune with the steal to get soul for their team was huge. Tactical getting caught out mid on the Sivir was kind of big. Um, but another game where Danny plays Seraphine. A lot of people are very, very critical. Berserker was critical last week of, of Danny's champion pool. In this meta, where we're seeing a ton of like these these scaling uh, champions, you know, like like the Sivir, um, like the Zeri. Um, some people are even pulling out like Twitch and stuff like that. Um, you know, Danny is playing Seraphine, Ezreal, Senna, stuff like that. Um, he, he's not really playing the main. Um, he plays Zeri, but he, he's not really pulling out the Sivir. He's not really pulling out some of these uh, other AD carries. Maybe that's something to watch out for. I don't know, but this is mostly. TSM video, of course, and ultimately their season is done. They had a lead in game five. They weren't able to take it down. They don't make it to worlds. Um, yes, they did qualify for playoffs in seventh place, but again, in the regular season this year, a seventh place and a 10th place finish, um, not really good. Um, so what is TSM going to do this off season? I don't know, but now, you know, Spica is uh, pretty much officially a free agent. Maybe he's going to resign with them. Maybe he's going to leave. Obviously, their off seasons could look two very, very different ways depending on if Spica does leave or if Spica does come back. Um, what are they going to do everywhere else? What are they going to do in the top lane? Is Solo coming back? Are they going to go after another top laner? Is Sol going to be their top laner? Mid, is Maple going to come back? Are they going to look for somebody else? Do they still want tactical? Are they going to get another AD carry? I think the only person that's really locked in at this point for next year is probably Chime. Um, and we're going to have to see what happens. I don't know, but, but TSM is finished for the season. It was a crazy, crazy year from them. Uh, you know, I, I know they turned off a lot of fans. They, they pushed a lot of fans away. They probably lost a lot of fans this year. Um, but at least they, they went out strong at the end. I think you have to respect the, the coaching staff and all the players for going through everything they went through this year. A lot of it was not their fault at all. Um, and still being able to put up a, an exciting playoff performance and, and push EG all the way to the brink. Um, but ultimately, they come up short. They are eliminated. Um, and now it's time to, to start getting ready to 2023. We'll definitely be doing, you know, like rebuilding TSM or something like that very, very soon. So if you guys have any ideas for TSM or what you think they might do this offseason, what you think they should do this offseason, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Uh, but yeah, pretty much it. Drop a like if you guys did enjoy it. I would appreciate that so, so much. Subscribe, stay up to date on all my latest content. Consider checking out the Twitch stream. First link in the description below. That's where we're going to do all the rebuilds, tier lists, uh, you know, all those kind of videos. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. But until then. Peace.